disputes are like they say are like wine do not improve by aging thus delay in settlement or disposal of conflicting claims in commercial related disputes is indeed antithetical to the notion of quick dispensation of justice and attracting investment into the economy which is also true of tax disputes that was the chief justice of nigeria honorable justice ibrahim tanko muhammad yes indeed wine gets better with age however if a dispute of any kind takes long to resolve it becomes a problem to facilitate quick or speedy dispensation of justice especially in tax matters the national judicial institute and the federal inland revenue service have been collaborating in the area of organizing training conferences for justices and judges at different levels with a view to bringing them up to speed with tax legislations and their intents and purposes the interactive training conference is in its second year the first one having been held in september and october 2021 just this other week, the 9th of June, Justices of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal gathered at the Transcorp Hotel in Abuja for the second in the series of the interactive training conferences jointly organized by the FIRS and the NGI. The following day, Friday 10th of June, it was the 10 of Justices of the Federal High Court, the FCT High Court and the National Industrial Court. The theme of the 2022 training conference was improving the quality of justice delivery in tax matters. On this episode, we'll be sharing with you what transpired on day one. In other words, the training conference held for the Honorable Justices of the Supreme Court and the Court of Appeal. In the course of the first day leg of the training conference, three papers were presented. We we'll begin with the first paper presented by Honorable Justice Benedict Kanyimp, President, National Industrial Court of Nigeria. The paper session was chaired by the Honorable Justice Olukayode Ariwola, Chairman, Education Committee of the Board of Governors of the NGI. Justice Kanyim began by sharing his discovery with regards to the paucity of task cases going up to the level of the APS courts. When I was asked to do this paper, I did a random search on Law Pavilion. How many cases reported have gotten to the Supreme Court? Between 1962 and today, what I found were only 14. 14 cases. You would find them listed in one of the footnotes. I think footnote two. But I also entered the caveat that there are some cases that are reported under certain legal subjects. Though they are tax cases, but they are not so reported. So I may have missed those. In fact, I give an example, Marina nominees, which you would find reported under corporate personality, when in actual fact, it is a tax case. In fact, I am critical of one of the cases. When I come towards the end of my discussion, I will point out the case was fought more on principles other than tax principles. It was argued by Chief Rotimi Williams, and the bulk of the discussion fell on whether the matter came within the contractual principle of accord and satisfaction. Majority of the tax issues involved were actually highlighted, but not as prominently as the issue of accord and satisfaction. And for some principles of law within the context of tax law, we lost the opportunity of certain profound statements by the Supreme Court. What is at the core of tax disputes? So while the tax man wants to get as much tax as is possible from the taxpayer, the taxpayer wants to reduce his liability to the barest minimum. Should the tax judge go with the taxman or the taxpayer? This is always the dilemma of the tax judge. 
historically, judges were property owners, and so they always sided with the taxpayer. And that's why we have rules like taxation must be statutory, and so can only be imposed pursuant to legislative authority. And we have adages like taxing statutes must be strictly construed. Any ambiguity must be resolved in favor of the taxpayer. And there is no equity about the tax. Nothing is to be read in and nothing is to be presumed. Now, this thing about ambiguity resolved in favor of the taxpayer. Let me just digress a bit here. Over time, throughout my studies, while I was teaching, I taught thoughts, I taught commercial law, I discovered that we were trained based on a perspective. If you take commercial law, for instance, the emphasis is on commercial transactions, and the rules were evolved by businessmen. And I think this point is absolutely necessary because pick an average law report, for instance. You are not going to see a case reported under the subject, consumer protection. And I'm coming to it. Now, we are taught commercial law from the standpoint of the law as evolved by merchants. Users of goods, for instance, we are never factored in. Pick your average sale of goods law. Implied terms as to merchantability. The word merchantability comes from the word merchant. Fitness for purpose is determined by reference to course of business. So the emphasis was on businessmen. But there is another group in economic relations actors who are always forgotten. Now, look at the relationship between workers and employer. Taxpayer, taxman, tenant, landlord. Um, sometimes you look at a banker and the bank customer. In all of these relationships, there is something that runs true. You have one very powerful person entering into an economic relationship with a not so powerful person. Yet all through the law, the emphasis has always been on the powerful person. The employer drafts the conditions of service. The manufacturer or producer drafts the contract of sale. The landlord drafts the tenancy agreement. The banker determines the conditions in which you open an account. So, it got me thinking. In emphasizing commercial transactions, we forgot those you can call economically less advantaged people. It's the same scenario in tax law that was brought to bear in terms of that rule. Ambiguity must be resolved in favor of the taxpayer. The assumption is that the taxpayer is not as big, not as powerful as the taxman or as government. But today, I ask a simple question. Microsoft, Google, Amazon, they are all taxpayers. Would multinationals like those be said to be less powerful in such a way that we should interpret tax law in their favor? This is a basic question we may need to think through. I share the view that faced with doubt, the judge should dig deeper into the text, context, and purpose of the provision against the background of the legislative purpose. But I go further to push that view that requires the judge to act as pragmatic tax analyst, in which event they should not ask what the legislature said or mean to say, or trying to accomplish, but what result would reflect the most sensible tax policy, and then adjudicate on that basis. Food for thought. On tax avoidance, Justice Kaimp went practical. To show the distinction between tax avoidance and tax mitigation, 
I gave the case of Federal Inland Revenue versus Citibank. The issue there was simple. Government passed a law that says if you invest in federal government bond over a long period and they give the time, you will not be subjected to tax when you dispose of it. Now, the owner of this bond, within some few years, not waiting for the maturity period, decided to sell. Now, in terms of the label of the transaction, it was a government bond that is long term. That was the description in terms of the contractual documents he signed with government. But he did not wait for maturity period and sold off. So the question now was, in selling his interest in the bond, if you take the literal interpretation that it is a long-term bond, then he did a transaction for which he should pay no tax. But if you take the idea that because he did not wait for maturity, he was trying to take advantage, in other words, generate an economic consequence different from that which was intended by the law itself, then you must subject him to tax. And what the courts, I think the matter ended at the Court of Appeal. It didn't get to the Supreme Court. What the court said was, long-term bonds are tax-free. Unfortunately, short-term bonds will not be tax-free. So since you do not wait for the maturity period, you must pay tax on it. And they held that transaction to be short-term not the long term that was described in the transaction documents. Still works clean practical. Taxpayers arrange their affairs. Please remember when we talk about taxpayers, we are not necessarily involved in talking about individuals. We are also talking about corporate entities. So a company can set up a subsidiary company. Later on when we talk about transfer pricing, you would find out that transactions within related companies may be geared specifically for tax advantage. A company from abroad, for instance, can sell to a company here at a huge amount of money. Then deliberately, the company here sells at a slightly higher figure. Then whatever is derived as profit here is used for advertisement. Advertisement is a deductible cost. So, the Nigerian company registers nil as profit. But the difference between what was sold abroad to a Nigerian company becomes the profit there. So, Nigeria is denied the tax itself. And then the company can take loss. You are going to find out later when to bring a loss and when to bring a profit has profound implications for tax liability. Intellectual, yes, but exciting, very exciting. Are you having fun? It is an offense punishable by a fine of 10 million naira and or imprisonment for any agency of the federal government other than FIRS to demand for books or returns for the purposes of tax. It is also an offense to carry out the function of assessment, collection or enforcement of tax or pay any portion of tax revenue to any person or into any account other than the relevant accounts designated by the Constitution or relevant laws of the National Assembly. It pays to pay your tax. This message is brought to you by the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS. You are still on to tax matters and we are sharing with you excerpts from the interactive training conference held for honorable justices of the supreme court and the court of appeal in abuja on the 9th of june 2022. mr matthew bojumbola a group lead at the firs presented a paper on taxation of non-residents under the nigerian tax laws Chairman of that paper presentation session was Honorable Justice Musa Datijo Mohamed. 
The third paper for the day was presented by Professor Abiola Sonny, Senior Advocate of Nigeria, who spoke on jurisdictional and legislative powers on tax collection in Nigeria, pertinent considerations. Chairman of that session was Honorable Justice Monica Domba Mensim, who was represented by Honorable Justice Chikwe Abo. Next episode, we'll be dealing with either one or both papers, and then we'll move into the second interactive session, which was held for judges of the Federal High Court, the FCT High Court, and the National Industrial Court. In the meantime, we want to take you back to the beginning of it all, the opening ceremony. We are indeed lucky to have this interactive training conference at a time when the government is focusing on enhancing economic growth through various fiscal policies, economic reforms, ease of doing business, and tax law reforms. The Federal Land Revenue Service, FIRS, the institution charged with the responsibility of assessing, collecting, enforcing and accounting for taxes on behalf of the government of Nigeria is at the center of implementing most of these reforms. This interactive training is to bring the judiciary up to speed with emerging issues in taxation. The objective is to enhance the capacity of the judiciary to dispense justice in tax matters from an informed position. The continued collaboration between judiciary and FRS will enhance the quality of justice delivery in tax matters. On the part of the FRS, it will be an added avenue to promote taxation, sensitize the judiciary on the current trends in taxation in Nigeria, especially the, re the recent reforms introduced by the various finance acts ensure effective tax dispute resolution as well as deal with other contemporary legal issues in the ever-changing business world. Still on the aims and objectives of the training conference. This workshop being an annual event on the calendar of programs of the Institute, is a collaborative effort between the National Judicial Institute and the Federal Internal Revenue aim at a better positioning justices and judges to deal with complex and contemporary tax dispute, in addition to developing core competencies in taxation and tax laws, thereby culminating in speedy dispensation of justice in this specialized area of law. What is the role of the Court of Appeal in the resolution of tax cases? The Court of Appeal as the penultimate court is vested with appellate jurisdiction over tax appeals arising from decisions of the Federal High Court and State High Courts, in see Section 241 of the Constitution of the Federal Republic of Nigeria 1999 as amended. As part of the active case management techniques of the court to ensure an efficient management and speedy administration of justice, tax matters were included in the list of fast track appeals in the Court of Appeal Fast Track Practice Directions 2021. This enables the court to abridge time for compliance with any rule or practice direction. To further promote high performance, productivity, and effective justice delivery, the Court of Appeal Rules 2021 contains some commendable innovations directed towards providing greater clarity on court procedure for litigants and counsel. Order 20 of the Court of Appeals 2021 provides for the electronic filing system of the court to file court processes and documents electronically by parties. The electronic filing unit shall operate in the registry of every judicial division of the court. Also, Order 21 of the said rules made provision for the virtual hearing of all appeals where deemed fit. The Chief Justice of Nigeria declared the training conference open. This strategic collaboration is, an, uh, is in alliance geared towards capacity building for justices to enable you keep abreast with contemporary laws and procedures regulating tax matters. As we are all aware, 
the impact of this sector to the development of our economy cannot be overemphasized. As such, the need to sustain this development by the judiciary is essential in view of the complex legal issues that may arise from the activities of other stakeholders in the scheme. Now, the theme of this year's conference or workshop is improving the quality of justice delivery in tax matters. It is appropriate. It is meant to steer the legal mind of judges or justices towards efficient administration of justice, which in turn has the capacity to engender economic growth. Justice Tanko seized the occasion to appeal for speedy dispensation of cases. It is on this premise that I will encourage stakeholders and indeed the, regul um, the regulator to embrace the use of uh, ADR, that's the uh, alternative dispute solution process, in resolving some of the lingering cases and perhaps you, the courts, at the last resort. Let's go taxing. Hand in hand, cheerfully. We go taxing as birds of a feather that flock around to make a living. With our sinners drawn on the field, we go to pay our taxes cheerfully, knowing that our lives come to naught without us taxing together to build our homestead, to mend our lives anew, to make our lives whole. Let's go taxing, hand in hand cheerfully, drawing our strength like a boom that breaks not, for taxing together makes us wholesome. I'm a very busy man. My business involves a lot of traveling and I interface with lots and lots of people and organizations. Tax compliance used to be a big drag on my business. It was time consuming and very costly. But now, no more. Introducing the FIRS Tax Pro Max, the truly fully end-to-end -end tax administration solution for companies' income tax, value-added tax, petroleum profits tax, and all other tax types. For fast, efficient, and convenient end-to-end -end tax experience, log on to www.taxpromax.firs.gov.ng. Tax Pro Max has turned things around for me. It is fast, user-friendly, and cost-effective. FIRS, making tax administration as easy as ABC. Time or time, we got to go. But we will leave you with this parting short from Justice B.B. Kainim. On how we use taxation to fight corruption, particularly now in this elective period. We saw on TV that EFC people went to each of these primaries. It shouldn't have been EFCC, it should have been revenue authorities who are there so that those who are dishing out money, the next question is how much have you paid as tax? And those who are receiving, those who are receiving, they should also pay. And I need to make two quick points here. One, the fact that an activity is a one-off activity does not mean it is necessarily going to go tax-free. Secondly, the fact that an activity is illegal does not mean it is tax-free. When I was teaching tax law, I like to tell students that even the process of prostitution is taxable. Yes, it's taxable because it's an activity, it's a business activity. The fact that it is branded illegal does not mean you will not pay. More food for thought. It is on that note that we draw the curtains on this episode of the program. We hope you had fun. We did. Let's meet again next week on this same station. Same day of the week, same time of the day. Bye for now. <laughs>